and welcome to my June wrap up. Um, I'm coming to you from a seated position now. I want to see how this feels. I really like it. I really like it to be honest. Um, I also got a new lens for my camera, but it's arriving tomorrow. So uh, next month, the background behind me is going to be way fuzzier and it's going to look amazing. This is the last time you have to contend with my poor focusing. This has been a bumper month for me. I read 11 books, um, so we should probably get started. The first one, I did just count that number, but I didn't actually finish. Um, this is Perennials by Mandy Berman. It came out in 2017, um, and it is about a summer camp um, that some girls go to, and I that was enough for me. I don't know where I found this. Maybe I was actually looking up books about summer camps, because I, um, I taught in a summer camp between the ages of 20 and 24, um, in upstate New York and it just still completely has my soul and I love that experience so much. I just wanted to read about people going and forming deep friendships and uh, you know loving the lake and the forests and um, oh, warms my heart so much. So I just wanted to read about that um, and I was like this is about camp. How bad could it be? Well, well. Um, the start I was like, it's okay writing, but for some reason I just couldn't separate any of the characters. They had such mundane names. So we had Rachel, Helen, Denise, and um, Fiona. Those were the first four people we meet, which are all just sound the same to me. Um, they're nice names, but they're all basically the same name, uh, which made it really, really difficult. Um, and then we had a character introduced from uh, an English boy called Chad, chads here uh and i was like you know what i can i'll let it slide but then about halfway through the book uh we just had a complete character shift for for no particular reason then our two main characters changed to nell i think and mo um also english um and <laughs> if there was just this this one bit that i was like i can't read this anymore i've lost complete respect for this because they didn't get a single english person to read it uh but they said um I was unstable after graduating school, she said, using her finger to mark quotation marks in the air. And my A-levels weren't good enough to get into any uni they liked. And it's like, you've got A-levels, you've got uni, but graduating school is not something anybody in the UK would say. It just, they just wouldn't. And at that point I was like, I can't, I can't anymore. I have to stop. Now I've got my moan out of the way, uh, let's move on to our first actual book. This is Eileen by Otessa Moshfeg. This came out in 2015. Um, it was her first full length novel. I think she, before then she'd had a short story collection and a novella um, published, but this is her first novel. Her second novel being My Year of Rest and Relaxation, one of my favorite books from last year. Um, and her new book, Death in Her Hands, has just come out in the US, although it's not available in the UK until August which is a bummer, but I'm very excited about that as well. Um, so Eileen is about a girl who, uh, she's in her mid twenties. She works at a like correctional institute for boys. So just like kid prison. Um, and she lives with her alcoholic ex cop father and she just doesn't have much of a life. Um, and she knows she doesn't have much of a life. So um, we have Eileen in the present in her older age, um, looking back on Eileen in 19, the events of 1964, when she is 24 years old. Um, and when she like old narrator Eileen, I love she just, she's just like making fun of her herself for being like, um, poorly dressed and poorly socialized and stuff. And she's like, when I when I escaped and got out to New York, I had a hell of a time. I wasn't such a prude. Um, but yeah, uh, the Eileen of this novel, she only escapes at the end. Um, so we just get, we just get frumpy Eileen. And, um, I, I found this quite distasteful. I really, really didn't warm to the character. And I thought it was very interesting. I actually did in my, um, in my video that's just gone up about the new me by Hallie Butler, which I also read this month, I compared it with Eileen, um, because I, really liked this um, unlikable protagonist and I just didn't warm to Eileen at all and I was trying to figure out um, why that was. So I go into more de detail about that, that here but um, I sort of finished this book so there's there's like sort of a crime mystery going on, there's a Chekhov's gun, there's like a, a alluring woman, there's just a lot of things happening um, 
and uh, I left it not feeling uh, particularly charmed by it, um, but also not sort of hollowed out by it, which I think it was more of its its intention. As with a lot of kind of debut uh, novels I read by people whose later work I already really respect, I can see the seeds of her greatness in this. Um, but yeah, it just didn't really hit the mark for me. The next book I read was Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. Um, I made a whole video talking about this, um, but it's about just, it's about sleep, but it's about everything you can think of to do with sleep. It's pretty uh, dense, <laughs> like, it goes everywhere. Um, and it's made me feel extremely guilty about not giving myself the, the the ideal circumstances and amount of time to get the sleep that would be best for me. Um, so if you want a guilt trip, here you go. And after that, um, I just re-listened to Harry Potter. I just fell down one day and I needed some Harry, Hermione and Ron in my life. So I listened to The Order of Phoenix and Half of a Prince and Deathly Hallows. I forgot how bloody good Deathly Hallows is. I feel like I haven't listened to that in about a year. And it's quite a contentious one to really like. Like my boyfriend really hates Deathly Hallows and it's like a bit of a sore point in our relationship. Um, but, oh, such a bloody good book. Um, I know that J.K. Rowling has said some really offensive things recently about trans people. I know there's a lot of calls by Harry Potter fans to like boycott her work and, and move away from um, from that fandom. But I feel like I've had to reckon a long time ago with JK Rowling uh, not being the author that I want her to be. And I have over the years managed to separate that art from that artist. Um, and I know some people can do that, some people can't do that, some people want to do that and some people don't want to do that. And I think any of those decisions is fine, but I don't want JK Rowling to take Harry Potter away from me. So that's my position on, on the subject. The next book I read was The Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro. Um, I read this for my book club. I like, finally forced them into, uh, always I have a few ideas and we have one, it's only a three person book club. It's me and my two best mates. And uh, one of them, um, somehow always manages to convince us to read whatever her idea for the month is and I just I really really wanted to read this and I pushed for it super hard and I won and I feel great about it because everyone admitted that it was an incredible book club book. <laughs> um, I made a full video on this if you want to watch it. Um, it is about a, a butler. Um, it's about a butler. I mean I can't, I can't give you much more than that. Well go watch the video about it. It's a fantastic book. The next book I read was The New Me by Hallie Butler. I've already just mentioned this briefly um, and I made a full video on this as well, diving more deeply into it. Um, but this is about a 30 year old girl called Millie who is in, uh, a, just keeps shuffling between these temp jobs and feels like she can't catch a break. Um, and then she gets this, this, this one job that could turn into a permanent job and starts kind of like reimagining her life um, in in that role and how she can you know get herself together. Um, it's a very it's like an unreliable narrator and it's quite a divisive read. I thought I would really dislike it, um, but I was just oddly charmed by it. A lot of books this month have to do with whether they charm me or not, and that's who knows. How, it's not an objective measure, but this one this one really charmed me. Next book I had that charmed me slightly less, sadly, um, is You Are Having a Good Time by Amy Baradale. Um, this is a collection of short stories um, and they're all kind of like on the ennui spectrum, as I like to call it. I have such a strong sense of what makes a book an ennui book um, and it's really hard to actually explain what that means to me, but it's something, it's something like people that care far too much about life and also far too little at the same time. Um, is that a good explanation of ennui? Who knows? Yeah, there were um, 10 short stories in here. Some that I like more than others, but none that, none that thrill me. But they have all stuck in my brain. Like they keep popping into my brain randomly, which is a bit confusing because with short stories, you can't, it's really hard to anchor them. So I just like remember reading a thing and then I have to like trace it back to the short story collection, which is quite confusing. If you're a fan of Tao Lin, I think you'd really like it, but yeah, nothing nothing about it really charmed me. The next thing I read was a, a re-listen. 
it was Maybe You Should Talk to Someone by Laurie Gottlieb. I listened to this a few months ago. This is a memoir of a therapist talking through her her life as a therapist and also a particular phase of her life where she had to seek therapy because she was blindsided by a breakup. Listening to it the second time round has made me really appreciate how well crafted the story she chose to tell were. She's talking about like a half dozen of her clients um, and I think they, they're really impactful stories about, about grief and regret um, and control and denial and they that and how all of those things relate to her her own life um it's just a lovely it's just a lovely memoir i know she's written a couple other things one of them one of them is like called like how to uh stop trying to find the perfect man and just settle or something like that um and i kind of want to read that but i think my boyfriend would think it was a little weird <laughs> uh, but yeah uh if you know any more stories along those lines or any other like laurie gottlieb content i should check out i would love to hear that down in the comments and finally this month i re-listened to five audiobook re-listens this month that's excessive um but i re-listened to an absolutely remarkable thing by hank green the sequel to this is coming out on july 7th which i'm excited about it's called a beautifully foolish endeavor um, and yeah, I, I didn't, it, my, my opinion on this book hasn't really changed. I enjoyed it. It's a bit of a romp. Um, there are some things that I didn't particularly like about it, but I enjoyed it a lot as a book and I'm really excited to read like the, the act two of this story. So those are all of the books I've read this month. Let me know if you've read anything particularly amazing that you want to recommend to me. Um, and as always, Please tell me if any of those books have taken your fancy based on this video. I always leave like affiliate links below if you want to chuck a little little sum my way. Um, and you can also check them out on charreads.com, which I will keep recommending to you. I, I now added um, in the books list view, um, I added like you can filter by subject and genre, um, which is really exciting. And I'm starting to do all of the kind of like fun things that make it a really cool place to go and play around on. Um, so that's exciting. More of them coming in the next month, hopefully low key. But that's enough now and look out for a special highly requested video in the next couple of weeks on this channel. I'm bigging it up. Like and subscribe, please really do. Bye.